Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, dying times here. That's N I C K P O P P L E T O N, Pocatello, Idaho, 83201208, like I said before, fucking representing Neck Brace. How long you been with these guys? I've been with these dudes for a few years, not, ne not necessarily Neck Brace, Mesa K. You know, pretty much just a Mesa K. But like, three different change the people, you know, but I've been there about five years. Tell me, tell me what you used to do with the I used to play guitar. And then we recruited Mourn the Losses guitar player, Etchy, played guitar in my spot, jazzed it up a whole shitload, and I went to vocals. And that's where I got my inspiration for neck breaks. Mind altering drugs? <laughs> I don't know about nah, I'm just kidding. Awesome. I don't know. I'm trying to find a good way of living. <laughs> Being happy without bills and shit. We just got done playing a show. These two girls are probably the most beautiful girls in Pocatello, Amanda and Susie. They're total babes. They're my friends. They're fans. And I just love them to death. So I'm glad they came to see us. That's about all I got before their boyfriends and husbands fucking beat the fuck out of me. But anyway, that's all I got, bro. This is Gary. He's joining in on this. <laughs> when? About 1999. 2005? Yeah, we turned the fucking nines over at 666. Oh. It's fate. Yeah, we kind of moved into the abyss. You know? Developed a relationship somewhere in there. Come on in this motherfucker, dude. All right, this is Nick. Yeah, represent. This is a freaking family reunion here. This looks like what? Oh shit, immense decay. Used to be. <laughs> At one time. Oh. Old school. Old school ribbing. Tell me about uh, tell me about immense decay too. It's the same dudes, pretty much. Yeah, actually, except for Pat. You're one of the founding members of Neck Brace. Yep. I, I like writing, writing songs. Uh, so I mean, all the music I had written was, was done, by myself, and then finally I got to, you know, talk down into jamming and stuff. We started it. songs and just been going with it from there. Heavy music, what's it called? Heavy metal. I don't know, there's many different styles of heavy metal and you know, you know how it goes. Yeah. We're just, we're pretty much a little bit of everything. Me and Dan write most of the songs and both of us, you know, we're influenced by all kinds of different bands and uh, playing styles. I wouldn't really base it down to a certain style of metal, but just heavy.
They did such an amazing job. I mean, it was just an awesome time, start to finish. So uh, kudos to every band that played there. I do have the results of how Pokapalooza went down. There you go, coming in at third place on Friday at Pokapalooza, Nick Brace. And those guys, they just tore up the stage. It was so awesome <laughs> to see those guys play. It was actually my first time seeing them play, and they were just awesome. Big congratulations to Nick Brace for oh, yeah. the third place finish. That's it, Nick yeah. 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 Brace! Uh, hopefully, if everything turns out well, we'll have Nick Brace in the studio. Sunday afternoon, just after 5 o'clock, it's now time for Four Locals Only, the very best of the local music scene. My name is Double D, bringing you what's going on with local music here in eastern Idaho. And boy, have I got a great show lined up for you today. We've got some uh, great music coming your way. Also, joining me live right here in the KBR 101 studios, uh, the third place winners of Pocapalooza 2005, Nick Brace in the studio. What's going on, guys? Good year. So we know who we're talking to here. Um, Nick, the vocalist, Nick Brace. Fred, Moran, uh, guitars. Dan, Ditto, play drums. Uh, Gary Pappas, bass guitar. And Midget Porn Guy. Uh, you guys took third place out of the ten bands that played. Pretty amazing show, I have to say. How did you guys feel about that coming into Book Palooza? Uh, it, was a, it was a big surprise, and we just pretty much went in, you know. Not really expecting to win or anything. But it was a good opportunity to play in front of such a big crowd of, you know, a lot of people listen to a lot of different music, and it was really good to see a pit, you know, that was thrashing the way it was. Saw a lot of homies in there throwing down. A lot of, you know, a lot of people come out and support that. So it was a great show for all of us. We think by far the biggest. Show. You know, at one point I saw you uh, jump off stage, Nick, down into the crowd. I, I couldn't quite tell what you were doing. Were you down there moshing with everybody? Yeah, I was, I was dancing with all my boys down there. A lot of those guys come down. They're always going down. They're just. Uh, Pretty diehard dudes. And yeah, that's a sweet cowboy head, I have to say. We've all been into horror flicks. Cheesy gore, funny gore, or serious gore, it don't matter. We, you know, it's gore is gore, and we put it in our music. Is there anything you'd like to say to your fans out there? Yeah, thanks for uh, you know, supporting us and coming out to our shows all the time. You know who you are. Just sum it up, we love you all. Now, when you were standing on stage at the end of the night, uh, you gotta tell me, uh, and they called your name for the third place, uh, how'd you guys feel about that? I looked at Pat, and we were like, should we go up there? Or, you know, <laughs> I don't know what to do. Man, it was it was tough as nails. A song from Neck Break. Probably the best song on our two-track demo. It's inspired by backstabbers and crackheads. This is uh, Tales of Brutality uh, from Neck Break. <laughs> Pretty cool crew of dudes I work with. Everybody's definitely a, a lot different than each other. You know, Gary and Dan and Pat and me. I, I think if we were all the same, neck brace wouldn't work, you know. Uh, but definitely a unique group of individuals. I'm a family guy. I got my kids and, you know, my wife. Dan and, and Gary work. And Pat's a quiet guy. His, his riffs and everything is just amazing. Uh, yeah. What, bud? I love you. I love you too. You know, as far as I'm concerned. I've got my, my holy grail with my kids and my girl. So. Significant other, girlfriend. Yeah. <laughs> what's that, uh, what's, what's her support mean to your music? You know, she's, she's not really into to heavy stuff, but she loves, she loves our stuff. So it's good to hear her input on things, what she likes or what she doesn't like. It's all part of life, man. You get your heart broken and shit. Your fucking family's all fucked up, dude. I just write it out on my guitar, dude. Show it to fucking people when we play, dude. And that's what makes it fucking... That's what makes it real. And that's what makes it killer, dude. What's what's that quest that you just gotta fucking accomplish? Fucking so make a living at it. <laughs> uh, yeah. You know, you can lie with words. You know, you can do this and that. But music is pure emotion. Music says the actual of what it is. And what it is is something that you can't put a word on because it is emotion. Therefore, I believe words were, was created after music. So therefore, music is emotion, that it is the first language of humanity. When I was a young boy, the river showed me how to swim. The devil couldn't catch me, so I caught up to him. Mom and Dad had a government job, so we moved all around. And 
Never got along in school, never seemed to settle down And when it rained, it seemed to pull down on my head I still remember 